Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In this video, we will discuss the convolution of two rectangular functions using a shortcut method. So, what is that shortcut method? In order to understand that one, first of all, consider two rectangular functions which are shown over here. The lower limit of this rectangular function is minus one, and the upper limit is one. So, what will be the width? The width will be equal to two. That will be obtained by subtracting the lower limit from the upper limit. Similarly, if you consider this rectangular function, its lower limit is minus one and its upper limit is one, and the width of this rectangular function is equal to two, and that is obtained by subtracting the lower limit from the upper limit, so that is equal to two. So when you will be convolving two rectangular functions of equal width, the result will always be a triangular function that is shown over here. So now, how to find out this starting point of the triangular function or the lower limit and the ending point of this triangular function that is the upper limit and the magnitude of this triangle the peak value of that one so that can be obtained by looking at lower limit and upper limit of these two rectangular functions which are given to you so let's suppose that this time is t1 this one is t2 this one is t3 and this one is t4 so the lower limit of your triangular function will be equal to the sum of the lower limits of the two rectangular functions which are given to you so here it is minus 1 here it is minus 1 so the sum is minus 2 so our triangular function will be starting from minus 2 and what will be the upper limit that's the last point of this triangular function so that will be equal to the sum of the upper limit upper limits of the two rectangular functions which are given So it is one and it is one. So their sum is equal to two that you can see over here. So the lower limit will be t one plus t three, where these are the lower limits of the two rectangular functions given to you, and the upper limit of the triangular function will be equal to the sum of the upper limit of the two rectangular functions which are given to you. And what will be the peak? The peak will be equal to the product of the magnitude of two functions a one and a two. and then you will have to multiply it by 2 to get the peak value of the resultant triangular function that will be obtained by the convolution of this uh, rectangular pulse with this rectangular pulse where these two rectangular pulses are of equal width so if these two are of are of equal width then the result will be a triangular function now let's consider another example in this Uh, one rectangular function is positive, having the magnitude four. Its lower limit is minus three, and the upper limit is one. And if you work out the width of that one, that is minus one minus minus three, so that will be equal to minus one plus three, and that is equal to two. So that is the width of this rectangular function. Second rectangular function is this one. Its lower limit is minus two, and its upper limit is zero, and its magnitude is minus two. so if you will be having a positive and the negative magnitude the resultant triangular wave form that will be obtained by the convolution of these two signals will be having the negative magnitude that is shown over here rest of the rules are same how to get this lower limit of the triangular function that is the sum of these two the lower limits of the rectangular functions so minus 3 and minus 2 minus 2 that is equal to minus 5 and if you take the sum of the upper limits minus 1 and 0 that is equal to 1 so your triangular function will be starting from minus 5 and will be up to minus 1 and what will be the center point of course that you can work out by uh, looking at this one and this one and that is equal to minus 3 okay now what will be the magnitude of this one as we discussed above um, over here that it is equal to the product of the magnitude of these two rectangular functions and then multiply by 2 so the magnitude over here is 4 and the magnitude over here is minus 2 and then we are going to multiply it by 2 so that is minus 16 so for this particular example the magnitude of this triangular wave form will be minus 16 right so you can easily work out the convolution of two rectangular functions or two rectangular pulses if the width of these two rectangular pulses are equal then you will always be getting a triangular wave form as a result of convolution of these two rectangular pulses or the functions now let's consider the second case in which uh, the width of these two rectangular pulses or functions are not equal so let's consider an example over here you can see a rectangular function starting at minus 1 
and ending at plus 1. The lower limit is minus 1, upper limit is 1. And the second rectangular function is starting at minus 2 and is ending at plus 2. So, the width in this case is equal to 4. Let us call it width 2. And in this case, the width is equal to 2 that is obtained by subtracting minus 1 from 1. That is subtracting the lower limit from the upper limit. Uh, sorry, from upper limit and um, uh, from upper limit subtract the lower limit. Okay, so, in this case you will always be getting a trapezoidal function as a result of convolution. First rectangular function, second rectangular function when you are going to convolve them, you are going to get a trapezoidal function. So, in this case you will have to work out the lower limit, upper limit and the time corresponding to these two points and the magnitude. So, these are the five things that we will have to work out looking at these two rectangular pulses. So, how to get this point that is the sum of the lower limits of these two function. Over here it was minus 1 and it is minus 2. So, their sum is minus 3. So, your trapezoidal function will be starting from here and where it will be ending the end point the upper limit will be the sum of the upper limits of the two individual rectangular pulses. Over here it is plus 1 and plus 2 their sum is equal to 3 so that you can see over here. So, sum of the upper limits of the two function will define the upper limit of the trapezoidal function. So, we have worked out this one, we have worked out this one. Now, how to work out this, this point and this point from where and your trapezoidal function will be changing its shape. Okay. So, this can be obtained by the sum of the upper limit and the lower limit of these two. If you look at that, what it, what it is this plus 1 and minus 2. So, this sum will be equal to minus 1. Okay, now, if you take the opposite from here, minus 1, uh, this uh, lower limit and this upper limit. So, minus 1 plus 2, so that is equal to 1. So, this sum is minimum, minus 2 plus 1, that is equal to minus 1. So, this point will be corresponding to this one, minus 1, the sum of T2 and T3 means in the opposite direction, the upper limit of this and the lower limit of this. Sum these and look at the value and also sum the lower limit and upper limit over here. So, which soever will be the minimum that will be uh, corresponding to uh, this point. So, in this case the sum of plus 1 and minus 2 is minus 1 and that will be uh, this point. Now, for the upper um, limit over here from where this trapezoidal function is changing. So, for that you will have to consider this one minus 1 plus 2 the sum is equal to 1. So, this point is equal to this one. So, in this way you can work out this point, this point, this point and this point. This is simply the sum of the lower limits, this is simply the sum of the upper limits and this point will be the sum of the upper or low, uh, upper and the lower and this point will be the sum of the upper and the lower in the opposite it means lower of this, upper of this, upper limit of this and the lower limit of this. Okay? So, Next thing is to find out the magnitude. How to find out the magnitude? That is obtained with the help of this formula. The magnitude of the first pulse, magnitude of the second pulse into the minimum of the width 1 and width 2. Whatsoever is the minimum width. Over here you can see the width is 2 and in this case the width is 4. So, minimum of these two is equal to 2. So, in this case if we work out the magnitude. So, uh, the magnitude of first let us suppose is, is equal to 1 and the magnitude of second is let us suppose equal to 1 and um, then the minimum of the width. The width of the first rectangular function is 2 and the width of the second rectangular function is 4. So, the minimum is 2. So, the result is 2 and this is the magnitude of this trapezoidal function. right? So, in this way quickly you can work out the uh, convolution result of two rectangular pulses. right? Okay, Now, let us look at another example. So, suppose we have um, uh, one rectangular function or the rectangular pulse that is starting from minus 3 and is ending at 0. Lower limit is minus 3, upper limit is 0. So, what will be the width? 0 minus minus 3. So, the width will be equal to 3 and let us suppose that its magnitude is equal to 2. And we are going to convolve it with another rectangular pulse whose lower limit is 1, upper limit is 3. So, its width is equal to 2 and let us suppose that its magnitude is equal to 3. 
and as we have discussed when we will be convolving two rectangular pulses the result will be the trapezoidal so first of all we are going to draw the trapezoidal and then we are going to work out this point this point this point this point and the magnitude five parameters you can say so um, this will be the sum of the lower limits of the two rectangular pulses that is minus one sorry minus three and from here it is one so the result is minus 2 that is the sum of t1 and t3 if we say this one is t1 this one is t3 so this is the sum of t1 and t3 now let's look at the upper limits t2 and t4 so their sum 0 plus 3 so that is equal to 3 so upper limit of this trapezoidal function is t2 plus t4 okay then to find out the um, uh, this point so this will be obtained by looking at the sum of upper limit and the lower limit over here so what is the sum the sum over here is equal to 1 and let's check out this one this one is minus 3 and this one is 3 so what is their sum their sum is 0 so this will be 0 over here because the minimum ha will have to come first so the sum of these two t1 and the t4 opposite if you are taking the lower from here the upper from the other side so that is 0 over here and then of course this point will be obtained by the sum of these two 0 and 1 so their sum is 1 so this is t2 plus t3 this is t2 and t3 okay now the last parameter is to find out the magnitude so how to find out the magnitude as we have seen in the last slide it is equal to the product of the magnitudes of the individual rectangular pulses into the minimum of the width so one width is 3 and the other width is 2 so the minimum is 2 so the minimum of 2 and 3 is 2 and the magnitude of the first is 2 and the magnitude of the second is 3 so if you take uh, this the product is 12 so its magnitude will be 12 so this trapezoidal function will be increasing from 0 to 12 from time minus 2 to 0 and then from 0 to time 1 it will remain constant equal to um, 12 and then from time 1 to 3 it will be it will be decreasing in terms of magnitude and finally reaching to the 0 so if I conclude this video, we have discussed that how we can work out the convolution of two rectangular functions quickly. If the rectangular functions are of equal width, the resultant convolution will be the triangular function. And if the rectangular pulses are of, un are of unequal width, then the resultant function will be a trapezoidal function. And we have seen that how we can work out the five parameters of the trapezoidal function and three parameters of the triangular functions. Hopefully, you would be able to now quickly evaluate the convolution of the rectangular functions. And that's all from this video. Thank you very much.